Good morning, everybody. We have you um, on mute right now, and we're gonna leave it that way during the presentation. If anybody has questions during the presentation, you can go into the uh, chat room and then uh, address that right to Nadia, rather than to everyone, you can just address it to Nadia and she will answer that for you. And then we will unmute you at the end of the presentation and you can ask as many questions as you want. The other thing that I would ask is that if you would go into the chat room and sign in with your first and last name, that's gonna be our attendance sheet. Uh, I know some of you are, are doing this for a class and that request has come from, from uh, your professors. So if you would just take a couple minutes to go into the chat room and then just sign in with your first and last name, we'd really appreciate it. And then um, the other thing to remember, I had sent in the email yesterday that you were gonna have to re-register for sessions three and four and you do not. Um, if you are already on Handshake, then you will remain on the list and I will send out next week and the following week a new Zoom link for you so that you can get in for sessions three and for sessions four. Um, so I just wanted to introduce myself for you, those of you that don't know me, my name is Holly Coffin and I am the Director of Career Experiences in the Wigan Center for Professional Excellence, otherwise known as the WCPE. Um, I think we all know that the, the COVID situation has created a very challenging job search environment and we became aware of that and we became aware of, of anxieties that were out there. So in response to that, uh, we have partnered with Nadia Whiteside to develop this virtual uh, career boot camp. And I just want to make a side note that the series was generously funded by a grant that we got from uh, Enterprise Holding Foundation. So thank you to them. Um, on behalf of the WCPE, I want to welcome you to the first of three sessions today, navigating the COVID job market. And I also want to remind you that the WCPE resources and services are available to you online. So please take advantage of Handshake make appointments with us, take advantage of the resources that we have on there. We're here to help you through this, through this difficult time. Um, just a quick note about Nadia. Uh, Nadia brings 20 years of experience in career services to her work um, in mid-career professionals and with also with new graduates. Uh, she most recently served as the program and coaching director for the Career Transition Center of Chicago and has held various administrative and director positions at both nonprofit organizations and higher education institutions. Her work include, includes career coaching, training, program development, strategic planning, volunteer and event management. So on that note, please join me in welcoming Nadia. Thanks so much, Holly. Good morning, almost afternoon to everyone. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. I hope that you're surviving the, uh, the lockdown here. And part of this program, what Holly and I were hoping to achieve is really help to engage you during a time of isolation and create some actions for you to not only move forward in your job search or pursuing an internship, but also allow for you to collaborate and connect with your fellow students so that you feel a little less isolated during this time. Um, there's not, thank you so much, Holly, for that lovely introduction. The only other thing I'll add is that um, I did have the pleasure of working with Elmhurst College over the last uh, four years as a program director with Career Transition Center. And then I relocated from Chicago to Phoenix this last fall, where I started my coaching and training practice. In March of this year, I um, debuted a new e called Boot Camp, a 21-day program for career, which is on Amazon Kin. And Holly and I took that model from the book and really customized a program for the Elmhurst students. So that's what we're gonna be exploring over these three sessions. 
Um, there will be a capstone activity as well. So the, as the description indicates, it's three Tuesday sessions from 1130 to one, and then we'll have about a 10 day period following that last on April 28th, where if you choose to, you can schedule a interview session with me and we can do that via phone or Skype, FaceTime, whatever you prefer. And I'll actually do an interview with you for a job. We'll have a debrief period and let you actually practice what you've learned, put it into some real life context. What I wanna say about the program that we've developed is that each activity and tool that I'm gonna introduce you to has multiple applications. So just to give you a sense of my coaching style and my training style is, I think we're all really busy and we need the most straightforward and holistic strategy when it comes to job search. I don't believe that applying for 150 jobs is necessarily the right way to go when you graduate. I'm more interested in people being strategic. I think less can be more. And I like to introduce folks to tools and resources that can be used in a number of different applications so that you can do less work but have more impact in your job search. So really what everything I'm gonna introduce you to is going to have multiple applications. They're going to come up. So what we do in this session will come up again in session two and in session three. So we're going to kind of build our career portfolio. In terms of success recommendations, what I can share with you for these three sessions is I am going to encourage you to participate in all three of the sessions. You have been provided a workbook by Holly. She sent a PDF out to you. And I encourage you to refer to that. As we're going through the session today, I will call out like the worksheets. I'll tell you what page they're on and that kind of thing. So you can kind of follow along, but there's a lot more material in your workbook than I will actually be able to cut today. And then I will also make reference in sessions two and three to some free webinars that we have on my YouTube channel. So today's session, our first session, is the introduction to value statement and storytelling. And what we're going to do is really lay the foundation for your career portfolio and your job search strategy. One thing I do want to mention before we go further is that this program is geared toward both seniors who are looking to land their first professional position, as well as juniors who are seeking an internship or perhaps some other volunteer opportunity. So I will offer examples of both scenarios throughout this program. This is a 90 minute session, again in three parts. And for today, we will take a break at about the halfway mark so everyone can stretch and get some refreshment, as well as a 10-minute offline writing break that we're going to take. Because another thing I'm really a fan of is creating documents that you're actually going to use and to use workshop and webinar time to actually craft things. So you're not just coming away from with information, but I want you to actually come away today in 90 minutes with something tangible in your hands that you've created and can start working with. In terms of what we're going to address today, we will identify what your professional brand is, and each of you has a brand. We're gonna try and get at that today. I'm going to give you an overview of value statements, and we're actually going to draft a value statement. And then I'm going to do a mini workshop on storytelling for in the, within the context of job search, networking, and interviews. And that will lead us into next week's session, which is going to be on networking. So that's what we're going to cover today. What I hope to achieve with today's session is that you will come away with 
and understanding and be able to really articulate what your professional brand is. Speak to that through a value statement that can be stated in 30 to 45 seconds and then develop three one minute stories that you can use for networking and interviews. It's a pretty tall order. That's why I call this a boot camp. I put a lot of information into each session. So um, this is going to require some energy and commitment, but there's just so many aspects of job search and to encapsulate into three sessions is going to require us to cover a lot of ground. So I want to dive right into that. What you'll need for today's session, I'll ask you to refer to your workbook. You might want to grab a pen and paper to write down some drafts and take notes throughout today's session and just be really engaged. I know 90 minutes is a long time. That's why I built in a couple breaks. But the more you participate and take notes and write drafts as we're working through these lessons, you're going to come away with some really great tangible outcomes. So let's get started. This is part one, identifying your professional brand. So when we talk about a brand statement, a brand or a value statement really defines what you stand for as a professional. Not gonna be limited to a specific employer. It's not gonna change like your your brand is really who you are as a professional. So once you really develop that and feel it's an authentic statement about who you are holistically as a professional, what you bring to an organization, that's your brand going forward. And that will be defined in your LinkedIn profile, in your resume, in the way that you talk to people, everything. So we're laying a foundation here. And I love this quote from Tom Peters, you are a brand. And that's really what we're going to be exploring today. You're in charge of your brand. There's no single path to success. And there is no right way to create the brand called you. So even though there's 30 or so of you on this webinar today, there's going to be 30 different brands here. Each of you is individual. You have your own story. You have unique experiences and you have unique talents. And so each of you is going to craft something that's very specific to you as a brand. And why we do that, first of all, it's really an authentic way to present yourself to hiring managers. It's compelling, and it's also going to help you match to the ideal job. So that's really what we're striving for. So how do we identify and articulate your brand? We're going to incorporate your own personal backgrounds, challenges you faced, your proudest moments, things like that. And then we're going to craft a document so that you can communicate the totality of your identity, personally, professionally. How do you work individually? How do you work with teams? And really convey what that is that's unique about you as a professional. So our first activity is that we're going to identify some key words that will lend themselves and help develop your brand, okay? So this is the first step in identifying what your brand is as a professional. And these words should also reflect the industry and job things that you're targeting. So whether you're getting ready to graduate and looking for jobs, or maybe you're still in school for another year or two, and you're looking at maybe some summer work, internships, things like that, these strategies are going to apply regardless of your area. So when we talk about keywords, why do we need to identify these? Well, the truth is, guys, robots are reading your resumes more than people are these days. That's just the reality of search. We've got a really complex job market. There's four generations competing in the workplace. 
there are more college graduates than ever before in history. And I don't say this to scare you, but rather to set the stage that it's a highly competitive global market. And what I'm going to share with you are strategies based on my work with recruiters and hiring managers, all those inside secrets that no one ever shares with job candidates. I want to help reveal that to you. And one of the ways that we can put ourselves at the top of that candidate pool and have a human being actually looking at our documents and inviting us for interviews is to do some keyword optimization with everything that's online. So the reason we're going to identify and use these keywords is to help draw recruiters to our LinkedIn profile to get past applicant tracking systems online and things of that nature, because so much of what we're going to be submitting for jobs is going to be online. And if those keywords aren't present and they don't align with the jobs we're applying for, we're not going to get through to a human being. And we're going to do a whole session on applicant tracking systems um, in week three. But for now, I wanted to just kind of lay the groundwork and tell you, why are we doing this and why is this important? So where are we going to find our keywords? We're going to look at company websites. So if you're thinking about your dream job and maybe you want to work for Google or you want to work for some other company, you've really got some companies on your radar, start researching them, visit their websites. They all have Facebook pages. Some of them have LinkedIn as well. You can look at job descriptions for the actual jobs you're hoping to secure upon graduation. And LinkedIn, Facebook for both individuals who are working in that field as well as the companies themselves. So that's where we're going to kind of launch our keyword search. And I wanted to walk you through an actual process. So I'm going to look for a program management position with a healthcare conglomerate. So I'm starting with Northwestern Medicine since I'm Chicago based here. And I found this quality program manager position. I'm like, oh, this is exactly what I wanna do when I graduate. So I downloaded this job description. It reads like exactly what I want. This is something I'd like to apply for. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start to highlight what are the key words in this job description? Because the folks at Northwestern, their HR team carefully crafted this job description. They wanna convey what their brand is, what they value as an organization and what they're looking for in a candidate. So they've been very thoughtful about each of these words and they've already identified what the key words are that they're going to put into these applicant tracking systems to connect with the right job candidates. So what we have to do as candidates is identify those. So I went through and what I did is I looked for words that really described the essence of what they're looking for in this position and what as a corporation they value. And you can see there's lots of repetition, quality, patient safety, patient care, leadership, quality again, leadership. And then I'm looking for some attributes as well. So how do they describe that ideal candidate? Collaborative, engagement, responsible for self-development and professional engagement. You see how repetitive it is? And when you really start looking for these keywords, you'll realize job descriptions are, and they're repetitive intentionally. So what did I get from that? I, I identified five keywords from that job description. So I'm going to write those five keywords down. But I'm not done yet. I got to keep going. I got a little more research to do. I'm going to visit the company website for Northwestern Medicine, and I'm going to look at their Facebook page. And among that, the kind of things I'm looking for is press, 
So have there been articles or, you know, anything that refers to them, anything written by Northwestern Medicine? I see they've received a lot of awards. There's got to be some write-ups in the press about that. If you look down to the bottom of this, it's a little faded, but of course they have their mission statement there. They have kind of the story of what they value and the services that they provide. So as I'm reading through this, I'm getting a better sense of who this company is, what their values are, and I'm aligning that with my own personal attributes. So again, looking for keywords, here's their mission statement, for example, patient satisfaction, patients come first, quality, sensitivity to the individual needs of our patients, quality again, critical inquiry and learning. And that's, you know, that last statement, I think mission statements are the best way to really understand an organization. If you're gonna apply for a company, you absolutely need to read their mission statement because this is the most carefully crafted document that they've probably ever created. And this is really gonna speak to who they are. This is their brand. So what did I glean from this? quality, engagement, patient care, and safety. So now I've got some more keywords. Now I'm going to consolidate those. So everything that I've done in my research today as I'm researching Northwestern, Northwestern Medicine is I learned that there are four top keywords are quality, engagement, leadership, patient care, and safety. I just kind of melded that together. Now I have to add my own attributes and strengths. I'm a big fan of strength finders, and some of you may have done that assessment. You may have taken some other assessments throughout time at Elmhurst, had some insight as to talents that you as an individual, so those you're going to want to integrate and add a couple of those into this list of keywords. So for me, my top five strengths I looked at and I was like, okay, of those top five strengths, what are the two that really speak to what Northwestern Medicine is looking for and what a quality program manager needs to possess? because I really want to match this to the job I'm seeking. I'm going for my dream job here, so I want to really align these attributes. So I added my input and collaborative. So now I've got my list of five keywords, and this is what I'm going to integrate into my value statement, the one minute stories I'm going to create, my resume, cover letters, and a LinkedIn profile. So when we're talking about keyword optimization and getting past those robots and getting our resume into the hands of a hiring professional, this is how you do it. So these keywords are really essential. So now that we've identified these keywords, let me introduce you to the next step in our job search process. We're going to create a value statement, okay? And feel free if you need to chime in with questions in the chat room throughout because I, I am covering a lot of material pretty quickly. So if you have questions along the way, please don't hesitate to chime in and I will answer those as we go along. So what is our value statement? something that conveys our professional brand and identifies our career goals and it helps others to help you so when we talk about networking next week it's always awkward right when you go to a networking event or even something online how do you introduce yourself and when people say oh well tell me a little bit about yourself it's always you know what do i say where do i start with that um 
That's why we use a value statement. It's something that we've prepared. It organically describes who we are and it helps us respond to that tell me about yourself request. So let's break it down a little bit. It's really a detailed tagline that's going to serve as your marketing tool. So I want you to think of your value statement or your and you can call it or interchangeable terms as something you use to market yourself. This is our sales pitch. Okay. And even with little or no experience as a recent college grad or a student looking for an internship, you can use this value statement to address the skills that you're building right now. So keep in mind that this is an evolving set of skills that you have. And we really want to speak to who you are as a professional. So this is the outline that I have for your value. You're really going to write this in four parts and then put it all together. So I like to make this as simple as possible. Who am I? What I do? How I do? And for whom I do it? That's it. In a nutshell, that's your brand, your value statement. So let's talk about this for a second. Who I am, that's going to be your first sentence of the type of professional you are. So you want to kind of state what industry, what field you want to be working in. So I'm a social media professional, marketing professional, um, social work, whatever your crown is, you know, kind of major in that personality and attributes. That's who you are. What do you, that's where you want to just your unique approach and the service you provide. Because what people are looking for is, um, and this is something that recruiters tell me over and over again. They're like, the bottom line is when I talk to a candidate, I want to know how do they solve problems more than any else. That's what they want to know about as a candidate. So that's why we need to integrate what we do and how we do it into our value statement. So process for addressing problems or working with difficult people or engaging a team. Like you do that. We want to get at that, your process. And for whom do I do it? And that's simply the audience customer that you're going to be serving your work. Okay, I hope that makes sense. But I want to give you examples to kind of bring this to life. And these are actual uh, college students that I worked with. These are their value statements to get you, give you a sense of what people are putting out there. I write exciting, aging blog content for e-commerce platform, the software that integrates with them. Really straightforward, right? great conversational statement that you can show someone when you're networking or when you're being screened by a recruiter. Pretty straightforward, right? But we can take this a bit further and start to enhance this value statement by describing your and how you approach things this client did. I'm a talent acquisition specialist who works as part of a dynamic team. Shooter who isn't afraid to have tough conversations. The approach allows, allows for creativity and change with a strong focus on standards and implementation. And you see how he wrote the state to align with the job that he's looking for, right? I mean, speaks like a description and you know that that target job he's really focused on has a statement in there about standards, implementation, tough conversations, creativity, right? You can tell what the key words are by reading this statement. So I think it's really spot on. And I want you to keep in mind as we're crafting this that your value statement should be reflective and values for the patients and companies 
you're targeting. So we do want to have a little bit of that um, specificity. You don't want your state too broad or keywords are going to be. Because again, this is what recruiters are looking for. They want to match this particular position trying to fill with date that has the requisite skills, value, and experience. Okay, so let's break this down step by step. We're going to start with the first part of your value statement, and you may start to take some notes and start to craft this as we're going along. Who am I? This is the concise statement that explains your professional focus and attributes. So think about your major. Think about the kind of work you want to do. If you're seeking an internship, what do you really want to gain from that to enhance your experience? So think about who I am. Let me give you an example of that. I'm going to walk you through an actual value value statement that was written by a recent grad. And she wrote, I completed my graduate work in psychology and international studies and am fluent in Spanish. What I do, so this is the second part. Most recently, I volunteered at a local nonprofit organization teaching ESL classes, provided referrals for supportive services and mentoring young people. Very specific, right? Talks to her exact experience and what she got out of that internship. I integrate a collaborative approach to my work. So we know collaborative is one of her keywords, right? And believe that working with a diverse team of professionals who all have a voice in the creative process produces the best results for the organization. See how specific that is about her approach. That's what we want to articulate in our value statement. And for whom I do it. My work focuses on working directly with immigrants and refugees in Chicago. See how specific that is? So when we're networking, you can take a statement like this and share it with others so that they can help you build these connections and lead you to decision makers in your field. So what, how she would take that value statement then when she's networking or doing an informational interview with someone and they're like, well, what do you wanna know? Or how can I help you? This is how you do it. You take that value statement and you turn it into a statement about what I'm hoping to gain from this experience. So she would say, I'm looking for a case management position at an organization serving immigrants and refugees in Chicago where I will be able to use my language skills. Really straightforward, right? So when we're talking um, to friends, colleagues, you know, people we're connecting with on LinkedIn and they're like, well, I'd love to help you as a new graduate. You know, what can I do in my capacity um, as an executive director of a nonprofit to help further your goals? And this is what you tell them. So you can see how this value statement is going to help you in that networking process and describing to someone exactly what kind of job you're looking for so that they can connect you to people that you know. And I want to, at this juncture, address the need for that specificity when targeting the desired position. I mentioned the competition, um, how the job market is right now. And because there's so many candidates that you'll be competing with, you really want to um, create for yourself an alignment between your brand and that specific job. We don't want it to be so generic that it looks like you just applied for 100 jobs. What recruiters want to hear is the job you're talking to them about is the number one job. It's the one you want. It's your dream position. 
So that's really what, what they want to glean from a conversation with you. That's what's going to impress them is if you're specific enough. And so um, I wanted to include this quote here and I'm, I am going to read to you just for the benefit of the recording because others may not be able to join us today. It's best to develop yourself in a very specific niche. You'll have more opportunities to prove you know what you're talking about. And while your potential audience might be slightly smaller, it will also be that much more relevant. Specificity is a trade of volume for significance. So when we talk about less is more, working harder, not smarter, those cliches really do come into play in job search. They really are true. We want to be specific and strategic. So just something I wanted you to keep in mind as we go forward. Okay. So, oh, and I think I might have, there we go. Here's an example of a few others. So I want you to be able to visualize yourself crafting these statements. So I wanted to share a few others that clients of mine have crafted. I have someone in finance and operations. I help organizations optimize their finances for cost savings and greater efficiency. I understand the numbers and what makes the company growth and success. Pretty straightforward, right? You can tell kind of what those keywords are in there, right? Then we've got a relationship sales professional whose value statement is, I attract and enhance highly profitable and enduring client relationships. I can take clients who are frothing at the mouth and have them singing the company praises. So I love that. I got a little sense of that person's personality in that, right? And then we've got an event planner who said, I plan events and meetings that people remember. Be it a wedding or an important business meeting, I know it sets the stage for a perfect experience. So see how those are really compelling? And they also describe exactly what that person does. Okay, so you can refer to the the uh, value statement worksheet on page six of your workbook. So if you want to refer to that um, as you begin to craft this, or you can write on that if you've downloaded it. A couple of things to remember about your value statement as you're crafting it. It's not a pitch, it's how you add value. So keep in mind what the recruiter is looking for, right? They're looking for that match, how you solve problems, how you bring value to an organization. It's going to underscore what distinguishes you as a unique candidate. So make sure that you include that how you do it piece. What's your process that's unique? Are you a really collaborative person? Do you have a really democratic style? Um, do you use humor to engage? I mean, whatever it is about you as a personality, make sure that that shows up in your value statement. You want to focus on impact and results and make it, again, relevant to that job that you're seeking. And then when you read it out loud to yourself, is it going to be memorable? Did you include something in there? that will stick out in the minds of that person that you shared your statement with. Okay, so we've covered a lot. And at this point, I want you to um, take a reflection break. We're gonna take five minutes here to stretch, maybe get yourself a snack and think about your brand. And as you ret uh, when you return, I want you to have your worksheet ready because we're going to start crafting our value statement, okay? So we're gonna go offline for five minutes and go ahead, take your, your break and kind of outline your value statement because that's going to lead us into our next activity okay so i'm going to set the clock for five minutes make sure you take a good a uh, good stretch boot campers because we're covering a lot here and i'll start.
I hope you all got an opportunity to stretch and get some refreshments and let's get, we're at about the halfway mark so we can dive back in now. I want to just, um, before we go into part three, give you a quick recap and um, refer to a couple pages in the workbook that will help you um, with this process. So you can turn to page five and there are some professional brand statements in there and then it breaks down the brand statement for you and then the worksheet will be on page six and i've also included a sample brand statement on page seven for you so those will help you to complete your brand statement or your value statement what we've done so far in part one is we talked about our brand and how this is really our tagline, our marketing tool for us as professionals. In part two, we began to craft our value statement, who I am, what I do, how I do it, and for whom I do it. And now we're going to go into part three. We're going to put this all together. Part three, we're going to explore effective storytelling for job search. And, and I love this quote too. This is really going to set the stage, I think, for our conversation over the next few minutes. Why do we do storytelling? I want to I really kind of explore that, why I think it's such an effective tool for people in job search. A story puts the storyteller and the listener in the same place and thus has the potential during a job interview to answer key questions on an emotional level. Emotions tend to stick in one's memory, even when facts are long forgotten. So the reason I share that with you is my interactions with recruiters and hiring managers, you know, it's really important for us as job candidates or internship seekers to remember where they're coming from and what they're looking for to kind of put ourselves in the shoes of a hiring manager and what they've shared with me over the years is that they talk to a lot of candidates you know recruiters make 30 or 40 phone calls a day they do phone screens hiring managers interview a lot of people and you know, and that's the reason we have these applicant tracking systems and screen candidates so thoroughly is they're really trying to get to the most compelling candidates. And particularly for a recruiter, they're not working for you. They're working on behalf of that company that they represent. So it's their job to present the very best candidates. They're having tons of conversations. And so I always think of it as a recruiter, if I go home at the end of the day and I've been on the phone for six or seven hours and I sit down with my partner for dinner and we're discussing how my day was, you want to be that candidate where they say, you know, I had the most interesting conversation today. Or, you know, I talked to this one guy who really stood out. You want to be that person who made a connection with the recruiter or the hiring manager. So we want to connect and storytelling is all about making that connection. So what are we going to gain from telling our story? We're going to clearly demonstrate our value as a job candidate. We're going to identify and connect with our successes. And you have them, even if you have limited job experience, there are things that you've done really well. And by describing those, it's going to lend some insight into that hiring professional as to what you bring to an organization. I, it also boosts your confidence because when we tell our own story as opposed to someone else's or something generic, it's real, it's authentic, and we can present it with confidence because no one else is going to have that story. It's yours and yours alone. So when you think about who you're competing with and those candidates who are talking about their skills and all of that kind of thing and why they're perfect for that job, no one else has that story that you do. 
And so it's going to make you feel comfortable and confident when you're having those conversations. And that's really the bottom line is we want to instigate a conversation and strengthen that connection. So that's where that emotional piece comes in. Storytelling is just, I think, the best way to do that. Okay, so where are we going to share this story? Definitely in interviews. Your LinkedIn profile, you want to create a story about who you are, something that really describes your brand and brings it to life. We're going to include part of the results and how we achieve outcomes in our resume. And we're going to use our stories in networking because it's so much more interesting to talk to someone when you have a story to share, right? So when you're networking, and we'll get into this a lot next week about how to start those conversations with people, but you're going to use your stories as we practice networking. The ultimate goal with storytelling is to create a great conversation in an interview. We want it to be concise, digestible, and memorable and start the conversation. One of the methods that career coaches employ is called the CAR method. Some people in the in the field of coaching, call it STARS. We're gonna to refer to it as CAR today, just to keep things simple. This is the method or the outline that we're gonna to use today to craft our first story. And the reason we call it a CAR, it's an acronym for Circumstance or Challenge, Actions and Results. So that's the outline for writing your story. Everything in our story that we're going to align with a particular job or internship opportunity that we're seeking is going to speak to our brand. Here's another quote I love. Um, and many of you may be familiar with Andrew Stanton because he's the co-writer of the stories, Toy Story movies. And who hasn't watched a Pixar movie, right? A great story comes from using what you know capturing a truth from experiencing it and expressing values you feel deeply. Allow the listener to make his own deductions about you from the story. That is, don't come out and say you're collaborative, adaptable, etc. Tell a story that convinces the listener that you possess these traits. So when we think about our resume and and we're not gonna do a whole workshop on that because I know most of you probably have a resume, you've already tackled that, but you may have listed some skills on your resume, right? That just speaks to something that you possess, but we wanna go a layer deeper than that through storytelling. So if you have leadership skills, we want you to tell a story that describes that, right? how that shows up in your work. So rather than just using words, um, a list of skills, we wanna actually describe how our personal attributes show up in our work so that the person that's listening to us can glean from that who we are and what our real brand is. Okay, so let's get, um, let's get started on crafting your first story, shall we? Okay, where are you going to start? So a few places you can start to generate ideas for your first story is maybe a previous position or an internship experience you had. So volunteer work you've done, a summer job. Um, you've all had some exposure to doing some work. So you can generate your story based on one of those experiences. If you've taken an assessment at Elmhurst, what is your top talent or strength? What did you get from those assessments in terms of insight as to what you do well personally? If you've ever had a performance review on a job, refer to that. What did your supervisor or instructor say about you? 
and if you've ever had someone write a letter of recommendation, what did they cite as your strength or your greatest contribution? And this is, a, you know, this is a tough exercise because I think it's difficult for a lot of us to identify what we do best. Or we think about a job we had over the summer. And, well, I just did the job. That's what I'd hear from clients. I don't know. I just did it. I did what I was supposed to do. Well, let's think deeper than that. What did you do particularly well and why and how? So this exercise is going to um, help you peel back those layers and get at what you really do best, what your process is, okay? And that's gonna be our action statement. So one of the questions you can ask yourself to launch this writing of your first story is what was my proudest moment or biggest challenge in recent memory? And I'm just gonna let you chew on that for a minute here, you know, reflect on that. What was my proudest moment or the biggest challenge I faced in recent memory? If you have limited work experience, um, or you can't think of something specific, it doesn't have to be about work. Um, I was interviewing for a job one time and the question the interviewer asked me was, think of something that you did with your family or friends that required you to take on a leadership position. And I was like, wow, okay. I couldn't, she didn't want to hear about a job I had had where my leadership showed up. She wanted to know about something personal. And so I dove into a story about um, my in-laws 50th anniversary party and what my role was within the family of helping to plan that. And that was a way for her as a hiring manager to understand just how do I naturally operate? Like what's my personality? Am I the leader? You know, am I organized? Do I work well with other people who might have dissenting opinions about what we should do? So she really got some insight for me as a candidate by me sharing that personal story. So if you're feeling stuck on job experience, think about something that you did maybe in your family or amongst a group of friends. So you've got lots of territory that you can explore. So here's one of um, my one minute stories, one of my car stories that I used from years past. I wanna actually break it down for you. My challenge statement, as the new volunteer coordinator with ABC Literary, I was hired just three months before the annual gala and charged with recruiting 20 volunteers for the event. So you can see how I wrote my challenge statement. It's just one sentence, it's your introduction to your story, and you want to let out kind of the who, what, where, when, why. Okay, so that's what your challenge statement in your story is going to be. Kind of present the facts, what was your role, what were you charged with, what was the challenge or the situation that you were faced with. So we're going to pick just one for each story, just one challenge. We want it to be specific, okay? So that was mine. I set the stage in this introduction in my challenge statement by providing some pertinent details so that the listener is engaged now. So they realize, oh, okay, she only had three months to do this, so there was a real time crunch here, and she had this big goal that, that she was given, okay? So now they know what my situation is. There's a little curiosity now. Okay, how did she solve this challenge? And then my action statement, I outlined in four steps. And I wrote it in a narrative format. You can actually write bullets in your story. You can number them. However you speak authentically. So some of us like to say, well, I took four action steps. Number one, I did this. Number two, I did that. Or you can just kind of let it flow. 
So here's my action statement. And this is the bulk of your story. This is where all the details are going to be. To address this immediate need, I assembled a committee of longtime existing volunteers to assist with recruitment. So that's my step one. I launched a contest to award the person who could recruit the most volunteers in two weeks. Meanwhile, I reviewed records of past events to identify volunteers from the last three galas and solicited them to volunteer. Finally, I collaborated with the event coordinator to advertise volunteers needed on the website and at local colleges with an offer of free dinner and networking at the gala for all the volunteers. So as you can see, my action statement is four actions that I took and each of them represents kind of a different attribute or skill that I have. And I did that really intentionally. So in my first statement, I wanted to show how I can be collaborative and bring people together. So that's why I talked about the committee that I brought together. Then in the second sentence, I launched a contest. So now I'm getting a little bit creative. I'm like, okay, how else can I engage people? How am I gonna tackle this challenge? And so I made it a contest. So that shows that I can be creative, I can engage people, and I can make things fun. This is what I wanna convey to the hiring manager. Then I also wanted to show that I can really do my due diligence with char when charged with a task. So I can do some research, I can go back and look at records. Um, I'm really thorough with my process. I wanted to really demonstrate that as well as rely on the expertise of previous volunteer coordinators. So I'm looking at kind of what they did. And then finally, in my last step, I want to reiterate my collaborative skill, how I worked with a colleague, right? So now I'm engaging not only with the committee I put together, but with the event coordinator and how we used social media to reach out to people and offered an incentive for college students to serve as volunteers, okay? And just a note, the reason I picked this one and wanted to share it with you guys is because um, this is actually a great way to network and get some real world experience. And I've done this myself. I've been volunteering with nonprofit organizations for over 20 years. It's a great way to gain new experiences and meet people. And if you're really trying to develop your professional portfolio and you want to get out there and meet people in your field, this is a great way to do it. You know, you may not be able to um, afford a membership to a professional association. Some of them are in the hundreds of dollars, but they usually have annual events and need volunteers. That's a great way to get foot in the door. Um, not have to pay for a ticket for the conference or for the dinner or whatever the the silent auction whatever the event is and yet you get to work side by side with the to meet the board members it's a great way to get in and network for free and gain some experience so i wanted to share that with you just as an aside as we get into the topic of networking next week so i laid out my four steps and what I wanna ask you at this point is, let me go back and let you just kind of scan through this again. My challenge statement, my actions. What are you learning about me at this point? If you're the hiring manager, what attributes are being revealed to you? Maybe that I'm collaborative, that I can engage in teamwork effectively. I know how to engage others, I'm creative. So see, I didn't say that. I didn't say, I'm a collaborative professional who promotes teamwork engagement. I'm telling a story instead that describes it. And finally, the results. 
As a result, we were able to recruit a total of 33 volunteers exceeding the goal by 20%. Additionally, we secured commitments from 20 of these individuals to return next year as GALA volunteers. So that's my result statement. And let's talk a little bit about that. You want your result to be just one or two sentences. This is the knockout punch at the end of your story. You want it to be powerful and quantifiable with a clearly stated outcome, okay? So this result, we talk about multiple applications, right? I promised you that. Um, this result is also going to be an outcome bullet on your resume. So under volunteer coordinator with ABC literacy, that's one of my bullet points under that position on my resume is I exceeded volunteer recruitment goals by 20% in the first three weeks of employment. Now I wanna introduce you to another way of tackling this car outline. Okay, so let me go back to this slide just for a minute. We start with a circumstance or challenge. The bulk of your story is going to be describing your actions and how you address that challenge and then providing a powerful result statement at the end. Now, some of you may have looked at my bullet there for my resume, my recruitment goal that I met and said, well, I already have that on my resume. And some of you probably do. You probably have some great resumes with quantifiable outcomes. If you do, what you can do is flip this car method and work your way backwards when you write your story. So when I wrote this particular one, for instance, I had already been working for about 15 years as a professional. So I had a pretty robust resume. And I had some really strong, powerful outcomes on my resume, quantifiable outcomes. So when it came to me writing these stories, I started with the results that were on my resume with those outcomes, and I went backwards. I had the result. Then I had to reflect on, gosh, how did I achieve that? <laughs> what were the action steps I took? And I had to reflect on that for a while and write that. That was the hardest part of writing my story. And then I restated what the challenge was that brought me to that in the first place. So you guys can do this however you want. You can go C-A-R or you can start with your result if you already have that on your resume and work your way backwards to write your story. So when a hiring manager or recruiter is reading your resume and sees this bullet, they may respond with, well, that's really impressive as an outcome. Tell me how you achieved it. And that's the introduction to your story. So if you think about being in an interview scenario, some of you I'm sure have been in interviews where that hiring manager is looking at your resume and they're asking you questions specifically off of it. They're using the resume as a script for themselves. They're gonna look at outcomes and be like, well, I wanna know how he or she achieved that result. That's a perfect cue for you to say, well, I'm really glad you asked. Let me share the story with you that will describe how I address this. See, it just leads right into it. Now you're having a conversation, okay? So that's why we do storytelling. As you review your draft of your story, I want you to ask yourself these specific questions. This is how to measure impact. Is your story concise? Can you say this story in less than a minute? Is it digestible? You know, is the listener going to be able to follow it? And is it memorable? So are they going to come away with, you know, really understanding who you are, 
and how you can impact their organization. So those are kind of your bullet points. Those are your metrics for measuring the strength of your story. And I'm gonna refer you now to page 10 of the workbook, and you'll see that there's a storytelling outline there using the CAR method. And this is how you're going to write your story. And you can start with, you know, I kind of wrote an intro for you there as the, and insert your title. So what was your role? And it may be a job title. It may have been, you know, as an intern with XYZ organization, it could be a personal story. So, you know, as the oldest sibling in my family, I was in charge of planning this family reunion or whatever it was. So you see how you can introduce that. Your challenge statement should kind of cover the who, what, where, when, why, and create a compelling introduction. Draw that listener in by presenting a situation or a challenge that gets them interested and makes them want to hear more about how you addressed it. Then you do your action statement, and this is what you did. Explain your process. This is going to be the bulk of your story, and when you're physically writing it out, and I've done this dozens of times with clients, I've done this workshop many, many times, it may take up a whole page. And don't worry about it as you're writing this out. If you have to, if you're writing on the margins and you keep going, you don't even have enough lines, just explain your whole process. Because no matter how much you've written, you will, you know, get it down to a one minute story. You'll determine what details need to be included and which don't. Just get it all out on paper for your first draft. Explain the whole process. And then your results should just be one to two sentences that are that powerful knockout punch at the end, hit them with a quantifiable achievement, this great outcome that you achieved. That's your story. So that's the outline. And I want to propose a lead off question to help instigate your writing and get you off on the right foot. So now that you kind of understand the purpose of car storytelling, I want you to start to write a draft. And as we know, for those of you who have been in interviews, one of the most common interview questions is tell me about a challenge you faced at your last job and how you handled it. We're going to use that question as the basis for your first story. So you will eventually craft a lot of stories that you'll want to share in interviews. Um, typically, I encourage clients to have seven to 10 one minute stories that address a variety of questions that are the most commonly used by hiring managers. But we're taking baby steps here. So let's, st let's start with one of the most common questions, this is also something that recruiters like to use on a phone screen, which is a much more limited conversation. So you have maybe 15 minutes to really impress them and really articulate what your brand is. So that's the question we're gonna use to launch your story today. Tell me about a challenge that you how you handled it. Here's an example of how I'm going to introduce my story. When someone says that, you say, I actually did have a challenge during my internship or my last job at XYZ that relates to the work I would be doing for your organization. And then you start your story. So there's your script. That's exactly how you answer that when a recruiter or hiring manager asks you about an accomplishment or a challenge, okay? Let's create a draft. So we're gonna take 10 minutes now and I'll go offline for 10 minutes to allow you time to use that draft um, outline and start crafting your story. 
So think about the last job you had, summer position, an internship, a team project, maybe group work you did in class at Elmhurst, anything. You can refer to any situation that has a compelling challenge, okay? So we're gonna go offline now for 10 minutes and I want you to create a draft of your story. And your draft. So I'm gonna leave this on the screen for the 10 minutes. You want it to be clear and concise. Our ultimate goal will be editing this story down to one minute in length. Create enough, or include rather, enough detail so that it can be understood, so that the person listening to it can follow along, but leave room for query and conversation. So that's really the challenge. I think the biggest challenge of writing one minute stories is finding that perfect balance with content, with your action steps. You want to have enough detail so it's clear and concise, but you still want to instigate a great conversation. So you don't want to give away everything. Okay. I'm going to leave you with that. We're going to go offline. I've got um, 51 minutes after the hour. We will come back at one minute after and Good luck doing your drafts. So going to, you can keep typing if you want, but I just wanna share um, a couple more slides with you before we wrap up for today. And these guidelines are in your workbook as well, so it will help you to continue drafting your story. What we wanna do going forward then is Finish writing your first story and then share it with a partner. We're all dealing with social isolation here, so I want to get past that and help you to connect this week with your friends, your former classmates, um, your current classmates, um, family members, anyone that you know you can get on the phone or get on Skype or FaceTime with and share your story. This really is a partnership activity. Talk with people who know you um, authentically and help them to reveal your brand through your story. So once you have your draft of your car story, I'm gonna encourage you to read it, your, both your value statement and your car story aloud to uh, your partner and ask them to evaluate and partner, and then you guys can switch. So you can do that this week with each other, help each other craft these stories and get them into a final format. So partners who are listening to the stories, I want you to give feedback to the storyteller. Was it concise, understandable? Was there enough detail to follow? That's really the most important piece. Was there enough detail or too much, that kind of thing? And then you can take notes and edit your story as needed. So all we're trying to achieve today is get a draft down. That's why I just gave you a few minutes to put some ideas down. When you get the story done, read it to a partner, let them listen and let them give you some feedback, okay? And then you'll edit it. You maybe want to add a few more details about what your process was. That action portion is really the most critical part of your story. And was your result powerful and compelling? And, you know, let them ask questions about your story and get feedback. So that's what we're going to do. Your homework for this week. Yes, we have homework. And I'm just going to add you, uh, or ask you rather, encourage you to take maybe 30 minutes a day. I know you have other homework right now. Um, you're still a student, even though you're working from home. So it's not going to take a huge amount of time. But if you dedicate just 30 minutes a day between now and next Tuesday's session to kind of attack these homework assignments, you'll be in a really good place with this boot camp to just keep charging forward. So 
lots of stuff we're doing, but going to help you make great strides and prepare for your job search. I'm going to encourage you to review the company websites for the companies that you're interested in, whether it's um, seeking an internship or someone you want to work for professionally as a new graduate. Look at some postings that are in of interest to you. Get those six keywords identified for your portfolio documents. Complete the value statement that you started today and share that with others in your life. And then write three one minute stories and just rehearse them. Just keep practicing. As you share them with your partners and edit them, you'll get it down to one you'll get to a point after rehearsing, it'll just sound really authentic, you know, it'll be organic because it's your story. And so you can collaborate. You know, I, I always like to an actor when they read a script, they memorize all of it to be with. And then once they get really comfortable with it and they've got it down, then they can add their own inflection and elaborate and kind of add their own style to it. That's exactly what you're doing as a storyteller. And I'm gonna encourage you to support each other and offer feedback, you know, partner up with your classmates and, and help each other craft some really compelling stories. And finally, um, I just wanna let you know that for our next session, we will be going into networking. That's gonna be our topic for next week. So we're gonna take what we did today and what you've continued to do th throughout the week and we're gonna integrate that into some networking strategies. And I know that word scares everyone, but we're gonna demystify networking. And I'm gonna teach you some strategy for having really comfortable, authentic conversations with people, both online and in person. We're really gonna be focusing next week on how to social, uh, use social media and how to network virtually because that's the state we're in right now. So there's actually a lot you can be doing from home to make connections. At this point, I. We're at the top of the hour, so I want to. Yes, please. Okay, you guys. I just want to ask again, if you haven't, would you please sign into the chat room? Um, this is our only way to have an attendance for you if you were in here. So just take the time, real quick, like to, to sign into the chat room, and then remember that we will be sending you Zoom links for next Tuesday, and then I'll send another one for uh, the twenty eighth. And then also look for an email from us because we'd like to do a survey to see your thoughts on the process and anything that we might be able to change for next week. Great. Oh, thank you. And tell, tell all your friends to sign up. They can still Absolutely. come for two and three. <laughs> Thanks so much, Holly. Um, if there are any questions, go ahead and answer that into the chat. I'll be glad to address them. And I, I will not. unmute right now in case anybody wants to ask a question. Okay, great. Does anybody have any questions for Nadia? Well, thank you. Uh, there's a reason I call this boot camp, guys. It's a lot of information and a little bit of time. This is actually um, just to give you a sense of what's coming. The next two sessions are more focused and a little less dense. We hit you with a lot this first week because this value statement and this one minute stories are really foundational for everything else. So you did an incredible amount of work this first week and I congratulate you. I encourage you to keep writing your stories this week and sharing them. And um, we will ease into networking next week. And I think it will be a little bit lighter um, you've done a lot of work and I thank you so much. I hope you found this valuable. I look forward to talking with all of you next Tuesday. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Nadia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you guys have any questions in between, um, you're fine to email me at hollyc at elmhurst.edu and I can certainly pass that on to her as well. Have a great day.
Bye. Bye.